Good morning students, I am Dr. G. S. Suresh again in front of you to teach design of RCC structural elements 10 CV 52. Yesterday I had spoken about compressive strength of concrete on 28th day after cast, casting in is considered as one of the measure of quality. We use cube of size 150 mm to measure the compressive strength. IS 456 stipulates that the minimum grade of concrete to be M20 for reinforced concrete. Though we neglect the tensile strength of the concrete, whenever we want to calculate the cracking moment, we use the tensile strength which is to be 10 to 20 percent of compressive strength. However, the code gives the tensile strength FCR that is called modulus of rupture as 0.7 root FCK which is in Newton per mm squared. We have discussed sufficiently about the limit state method concept. We have said it is probability of the structure to become unserviceable. The structure should withstand ultimate load and should also satisfy serviceability requirements such as deflection, crack and vibration. Steel in the form of circular bars are used as reinforcement and I often call this as rebar to take care of the tensile stress. The tensile stress induced into the steel bar will adopt the ductility factor and gives ductility to the structure. The high strength cold twisted bars denoted as HYSD high yield strength deformed bars are popularly used. Nowadays these bars have been replaced by thermomechanically treated bars abbreviated as TMT bars. We have sufficiently discussed about balance section, under reinforced section and over reinforced section. I will today continue with ultimate flexural strength of single reinforced rectangular section as part of unit 2 which is principles of limit state design and ultimate strength of RC section. Yesterday I derived the expression for balanced section, today I am considering under reinforced and over reinforced section. The tensile strain in the steel will attain first in the balanced section rather in the under reinforced section as 0.002 plus 0.87 Fy by Es. The strain in concrete will not attain its ultimate at the time of failure and that I call it as epsilon c. The depth of the neutral axis here is denoted as x u and the depth of the neutral axis from the tensile fiber is written as d minus x u. It is the same section which I had shown earlier, but the only difference is in the earlier balance section both the strain in concrete and steel used to be attaining their ultimate value. Now only the steel attains the ultimate value. To calculate the neutral axis depth we use the same equilibrium equation which I considered earlier as sigma h equal to 0 or sigma f x equal to 0. That is I equate concrete strength C u to the tensile strength T u. That equation leads to 0.36 f c k into x u into b equal to 0.87 f y into a s t max as we did earlier x u is equal to 0.87 f y 
AST by 0.36 FCKB which gives the equation 5. You can also express XU as XU by D by dividing both sides of the equation by D. Then I get 2.42 FY FC divided by FCK into AST by BD where AST by BD I can call it as percentage of reinforcement PT. But the XU by D will have the value less than XU limit by D for under reinforced section. That means to say that the neutral axis moves upward towards the compressive fiber and the moment of resistance is calculated by considering the tensile strength of steel. The tensile strength of the steel is Tu and multiplied by the lever arm Z. Therefore, the ultimate moment of resistance Mu is calculated as Tu equal to 0.87 Fy AST and Z is D minus 0.42 XU where XU by D already I have discussed. Therefore, I get Mu is equal to 0.87 Fy AST into D into 1 minus 0.42 and XU by D as given in the above equation is replaced. If I make a rearrangement in this equation, finally I am arriving at Mu by 0.875 BD squared equal to PT by 100 minus FY by FCK into PT by 100 whole squared. So, I can make a quadratic equation out of this and calculate the value of PT as in terms of percentage 50 FCK by FY into 1 minus root 1 minus 4.6 MU by FCK BD squared. And uh, very often I can replace this by another coefficient say R u as 4.6 mu F c k B d squared. This is equation number 6. So, I can have 3 types of problems while encountering the analysis of the members. Before this I want to tell you about the over reinforced section. The over reinforced section is the section in which the steel has got the quantity more than the limiting steel and the limiting steel is the steel which is called as PT limit. In this case the neutral axis depth goes down and due to this we can see the strain diagram in all the three cases as shown in the board now. Now, if you see the strain diagram for balance section, I have this as epsilon SU and this is epsilon CU. This is for balanced section. I will write this as BAL. Now, consider the strain in the steel only attains and the value of epsilon C is less than, then I will get the curve something like this. So, the neutral axis depth shifts upward. This is XU limb this is the limiting neutral axis depth. So, in the under reinforced section I write this as U s under reinforced section I get like this. Then when I take the over reinforced section the strain reaches epsilon C u and then the steel strain is less. If I join these two I get 
the neutral axis at the bottom. So, this neutral axis depth this is for under reinforced section, this is for balance section and this is for over reinforced section. So, friends you can see how the neutral axis depth varies in the strain diagram. This is nothing but the strain plot across the depth of the section. Therefore, I can say that the under reinforced section is much safer than having it as a over reinforced section and to have a balance section practically it is impossible only theoretically we can say I can make a balance section. Now to analyze the singly reinforced beam or a member I can have three types of problems. Type 1 to find out the depth of neutral axis and specifying the type of beam. Type 2 to find the moment of resistance of given section. Number 3 to design the beam. In the first type if the neutral axis depth what I calculate x u and compare to x u limb then if x u is less than x u limb I call that section as under reinforced. If x u is equal to x u limb then it is balance section. If x u is greater than x u limb then it is over reinforced section. So, to find the depth of the neutral axis we need to have the data given B, D, F C K, F Y and A S T. What are all this? This is width, depth, effective depth, F C K is characteristic strength of concrete, F Y is characteristic strength of steel, A S T is area of steel. By using the equations 1 and 4 we can calculate x u max and x u. I told you for F E 4 on 5 and M 20 concrete the x u max or x u limb is equal to 0 0.48 times the depth. x u is calculated by equating compressive strength and the tensile strength. The classification I have already told you that is there in this slide. I will now look at how to do the problems on type 2 to find the moment of resistance. The data required are as in the previous case B width, D effective depth, F C K characteristic strength of concrete, F Y characteristic strength of steel, A S T is area of steel. We compute x u and x u max as in the previous case using equation 5 and 1 and we find the moment of resistance if it is balance section either we use C u into z or T u into z. If it is under reinforced section we use T u into z. If it is over reinforced section we use C u into z. Type 3 is to find the cross section and area of steel generally the width of the section depends on the support width. Suppose the beam is resting on a wall or the beam is resting on a column it depends on that width. In practice the width of the beam will be like this 200 mm, 230 mm, 300 mm or 350 mm. Very rarely we provide very wide beams otherwise this is the normal size of the beam. Then we have F C K characteristic strength of concrete, F Y characteristic strength of steel and ultimate moment which is M U if m u is not given if the only the working moment is given we multiply the working moment by 1.5 and get the value of m u. Now to get the solution we determine 
the depth of the section as d balance equal to square root mu by q limb into b. This is if you remember mu limb is equal to q limb into b d square that was the equation I derived to you in the previous class. So, q limb is defined as the moment of resistance factor this factor is available in SP 16 table D for the particular grade of concrete and particular grade of steel. Generally, we increase the depth of the beam than obtained as D balance in the above equation. This is to make the beam to be under reinforced. I told you always we design the section as under reinforced sections. Then we have to assume suitable cover. Cover to the reinforcement is necessary to protect the steel from corrosion and also to avoid the corrosion from the environment hazard like may be acidic atmosphere or it may be the atmosphere in the coastal area, we need to provide a suitable cover. IS 456 based on the exposure condition and the fire exposure like 1 hour, 2 hours etcetera, the clear cover to the reinforcement is given. On the board now I will show you how this clear cover and effective cover is visualized. I get write a very enlarged view of the beam. Suppose you provide a reinforcement like this. This is the bottom portion of the bar and this cover is clear cover. And the distance to the center of the reinforcement from the tension fiber is called as effective cover. This cover we call it as effective cover and I use CC for this and I use CE for this. So, have a clear idea on what is clear cover and what is effective cover. The code gives you clear cover, add half the diameter to the clear cover, you get the effective cover C. So, in future I show you how we assume this and in detail this will be given to you by the other professors who teach you on the design of beams. Now, I will come back to this slide here I explain about the area of the steel to be computed from equation 6. So, now we will do some problems based on the explanation I have given you so far. Three types of problems we can encounter one is to find the neutral axis depth and specify the type of the beam number 2 to calculate the moment of resistance for the given section. Moment of resistance calculation means we are calculating the capacity of the beam to carry the bending moment and we do the third type of problem by designing. So, the first type is here as example 1 for the width of the beam 230 mm for the effective depth 520 mm and steel high yield strength having a yield strength of 415 Fe 415 and 4 bars of 16 mm dia bars are there. Concrete used is M 20, find the neutral axis depth and specify whether the beam is balanced, under reinforced or over reinforced. If the steel is changed to 4 of 20 mm dia, 
find the neutral axis depth and classify what type of beam it is, is what required in this problem. Now, we shall solve this as the first case where there are 4 bars of 16 mm dia. Friends, before we go to the solution, I want to give you one tip for your future classes. The standard bars, I will show you this on the board, the standard bars adopted in practice are listed here, 8 mm, 10 mm, 12 mm, 16 mm, 20 mm and 25 mm. This is the diameter of the bar and the area of this is very easy to remember approximately rounded off is in mm squared 50, 78.5, 113, 201, 314 and this is 491. This I calculate on the basis of pi by 4 into diameter square. So, it is very easy to remember these were numbers in future if I say I have 3 bars of 16 mm then what you should do is you have to multiply 3 into 2 not 1. So, no need to every time calculate it as pi by 4 dash squared. So, this is what uh, whenever we go to field we remember this and try to calculate quickly the area of number of bars required for a particular area of steel. So, try to remember this table, it is very easy to remember. Now, I will come to this problem. I am calculating the AST as 4 into pi by 4 16 squared, that is 4 into 201, which comes to 804 mm squared. What I require to start with? I require to calculate the neutral axis depth the neutral axis depth is x u given by equation 5 in the earlier derivation as 2.42 f y by f c k a s t b. So, you substitute f y equal to 415, f c k equal to 20, area of steel equal to 804, b equal to 230 which is the data given in the problem you have a calculator with you, check it is 175.3. Let us now make a calculation for x u max. Refer to IS 456, I hope you have brought today, it is with you, open page number 70. There you can see the table in the note, in the assumptions, it is written for F E 4 and 5 and M 20 concrete, it is 0.48 times D. So, that works out to be 0.48 into effective depth, which is 249.6 mm. So, now you compare this X u, X u is 175.3, X u max is 249.6. So, definitely X u is less than X u max therefore, the section is under reinforced. Very quickly you can make this calculation. We will go to the second case, wherein I have got 4 bars of 20 mm dia, 4 into 314 gives you 1256 mm square. Use the same equation as I used earlier and you get 2.4142, 415 20 and 1256 for ASTB 274.2. If you just check in the previous slide, X u max is 249.6. So, here it is 274, which is greater than 249.6. Therefore, this section is 
over reinforced because x u is greater than x u max. So, I hope you have understood friends it is very easy to make this calculation. Let us now go to example 2. In the example 2 I have to find the moment of resistance of the section given here. The section given is B equal to 200 mm, D equal to 600 mm and steel is mild steel with an area of 600 mm square and concrete M 20. The width of the section is not 230 as in the earlier case and nowadays you must have observed the wall is constructed using concrete blocks. They are called as solid blocks. These solid blocks are available in the sizes of 200 and 100 mm width. So, you cannot make with this concrete block 230 mm thick whereas, if you use the regular clay brick the clay brick is available in the size of 230. That is why in some problems I take it as 230, in this problem I have taken this as 200 and the effective depth is calculated as overall depth minus the effective cover. So, let us friend look at the calculation details required, it is same as few steps same as in the previous one. I need to calculate the value of x u. As I told you, we use the horizontal equilibrium equation for calculating the neutral axis depth. That is, we equate the concrete force C u to T u. C u is 0.36 f c k x u into b, whereas t u is 0.87 f y into a s t. Now, if you rearrange it, you get the equation as 2.42 f y by f c k into a s t by b. Then, you have x u is equal to 2.42 into 250 by 20 into 600 by 200 giving you the value as 90.75. Now, you calculate the limiting neutral axis depth refer to page 70. I hope you have the IS 456 with you open page 70 and go to class 38.1, see in the note 1, it gives for mild steel and M 20 concrete as 0.53 d. If you recall the previous problem for Fe 415 and M 20 concrete, we had X u lim or X u max as 0.48 d. So, in this case I get 318 mm as x u max. So, for the balance section the effective depth times 0 0.53 gives you 318 mm. So, definitely x u is very small compared to x u max hence the section is under reinforced. When the section is under reinforced how to calculate the internal moment? The internal moment can be calculated as C u into liver arm or T u into liver arm. In under reinforced section, steel force prevails because in the under reinforced section, the yielding of steel takes place first then the crushing of concrete takes. Therefore, 
I cannot use C u as the calculating force for moment of resistance, I have to use T u. We will have a thumb rule like this, if the section is under reinforced we use T u, otherwise we use C u to calculate the moment of resistance. So, this calculation is shown here m u equal to 0.87 f y, where f y is the characteristic strength of steel, a s t is area of steel, d is the effective depth minus 0 0.42 times the neutral axis depth is the liver arm. So, substitute for a s t substitute 600 for f y substitute 250, for effective depth substitute 600, for x u substitute 90.75 which we calculated in the previous step, you get 73.33 into 10 to the power of 6 Newton mm. How to convert Newton mm moment to kilo Newton meter, I will show you here. You have Newton mm, I want to convert this into kilo Newton meter. So, how do you do this? It is very simple to convert the Newton to kilo Newton divide this by 1000, to convert millimeter divide this by 1000. That means to say you are going to divide this by 1000 square or I can write this as equal to 1 divided by 10 cube into 10 cube equal to 1 divided by 10 to the power of 6 or equal to 10 to the power of minus 6. So, see on the screen you have the moment as 73.33 10 to the power of 6. So, you divide this by 10 to the power of minus 6, you get 10 to the power of 6 and 10 to the power of 6 getting cancelled and you get this as 73.33 kilo Newton meter. So, what is the another number we have to remember 10 to the power of minus 6. So, you have to multiply by 10 to the power of minus 6 to convert Newton mm to kilo Newton meter. The other way round, when you want to convert the kilo Newton meter to Newton mm, you multiply it by 10 to the power of 6. So, that we will see in the next problem. Problem number 3 is to find the moment of resistance of the section, where the width of the section is 230 depth effective depth is 400 mm and the span is 3.5, steel is F E 415, the diameter of the bar is 412 mm and concrete M 20. After finding the moment of resistance, find what is the maximum uniformly distributed load. Students, you are all used to the word UDL. UDL is nothing but uniformly distributed load. So, what is the beam can carry? And then it also asks you in this problem to calculate the limiting moment of resistance of the section given. So, we will do the calculation like this. First, area of steel. I told you instead of using pi by 4 into 12 square, I use 113, which I have shown you on the board. Same formula is uh, or the area is available for 12, 113. So, go come back here, 4 into 113 gives you the value of 452.3 mm square. So, use the equation for the neutral axis depth. 2.42 into F y by F c k 
into A S T by B. Substitute for F Y 4 and 5, F C K 20, A S T 452.3 and B 230. So, you get 98.75 mm and from clause 38.1 of page 70 in IS 456, you get X u max as 192 mm. So, again the section is under reinforced because the actual neutral axis is less than the limiting neutral axis. Then we have to calculate the moment of resistance of the section. Under reinforced section, it is T u into lever arm. What is T u? 0.87 F y into A S T. What is lever arm? D minus 0.42 X u. So, I substitute for F y 415 for A S T 452.3, then D 400 then x u is 98.75 actual neutral axis not the x u max do not make that mistake. That is only to compare for the limiting, but for the given area of steel the actual neutral axis is this 98.75. Then you get the limiting or the moment of resistance of the section not the limiting moment of resistance of the section as 58.55 into 10 to the power of 6 Newton dash mm. So, divide this by 10 to the power of 6 you get 58.55 kilo Newton meter. Now, we go to the second part of the problem wherein I have a beam here you can see the span of the beam is 3.5 and it is subjected to UDL of W u. If I equate the external bending moment to internal bending moment, I get the simply supported bending moment as W u L squared by 8. Friends, you have studied this well in your strength of materials on the chapter of bending moment and shear force. And several times in structural analysis, we have told you the maximum bending moment in a simply supported beam subjected to UDL is W u or W into L squared by 8. Equate the external bending moment to the moment of resistance. So, the M u is 58.55. So, you do not know W u multiplied by the span this is called effective span squared by 8 W u and equal to 38.24. So, you get W u as the maximum load if you divide this by 1.5 that gives you working load. So, it is very easy to calculate like this. At this point of time I want to show you one more practical aspects of designing. Friends we normally how we build a beam on a support suppose this is the beam and I have the support like this it could be a column it could be a wall or it could be anything maybe a pier pillar whatever you call you have two supports. This is the steel which I am giving in the elevation as A S T and I take this as the clear span L. Now, I write the effective span as L e and if I call the width of the support as W s and I assume both of them to be W s and if I call this effective depth as small d the code states that L e is greater of the two number 1 L plus effective depth or number 2 L plus W s that means, this is the center to center L plus W s by 2 into 2 that will give you 
out of the two whichever is larger that you take it as effective depth. Effective depth is the depth considered as either center to center of the support or L plus D, L is the clear span. So, if in some problem we have not given you the effective span, you would require to find the effective span from the clear span. So, this is the two equation you have to use. So, now we will come back to this problem. In the step 4, I calculate from the equation 3 mu lim as q lim into b d squared. It is either your tensile force or the compressive force which you have to consider. So, from table d of S p 16, q lim is 2.76. So, q lim 2.76 into 230 into 400 squared. So, I get the value as 101.57 into 10 to the power of 6 Newton mm or 10 101.57 kilo Newton meter. Suppose the same problem I ask you to calculate the concentrated load at mid span to take care of the same moment, then what do you do? Your maximum bending moment is different. If P u is the central concentrated load, then what is the bending moment? P u L by 4, P L by 4 was taught to you. So, 58.55 up to there the calculation is the same, only to calculate I need this. P u into 3.5 by 4 is equated to 58.55, then I get P u as 66.91. I will show you one more case of loading in the same problem. Suppose I want to do the calculation for a simply supported beam, same span 3.5 meters and I have a 2 point loading P u and P u at say a distance of 1.2 meters. This I will call it as A. So, if you write the bending moment diagram for this friends, you get a trapezoidal bending moment diagram like this, where the maximum bending moment m u is P u A, because you get this reaction as P u and P u. So, now the bending moment m u will be equal to P u into 1.2 which is equal to 58.55. So, you can always calculate what is the value of P u 58.55 divided by 1.2. Anything it could be that means to say before you do this problem, you should know how to calculate the maximum bending moment in standard cases. The standard cases is already shown to you in structure analysis 1 and 2. Now, I go to the third part of the problem that is designing. You are given with a moment of 60 kilo Newton meter and concrete is M 20, steel is Fe 415 you need to calculate the size of the section area of steel required. Generally in such problems, we assume the width of the beam, only we calculate the depth and we calculate the area of steel. The reason already I told you, the width of the section is depending on the type of the support if it is a 230 mm column width, then you are going to give 230 mm to match with the width of the column. Anyway, let us now try to understand this. As a part of the first step, I calculate x u max by using the x u max equal to 0.48 d q lim is 2.76 and the limiting steel is 0.96 and balance depth is calculated as square root mu by q lim b 
and I assume the width of the section as I told you 230 mm. Then I get the balanced effective depth as 376.5. Cover, cover already I told you earlier, it depends on the environmental condition and the exposure. For details refer to IS 456 chapter 2, first clause gives you about the cover. Then I am assuming the cover as 30 mm here, clear cover and I am using 16 mm dia. So, see the board friends now, the clear cover here is 30, that means to say this is 30 and the diameter of the bar is 16 mm. So, this half the diameter that is the radius is 8 mm. So, it is 30 plus 8, 38 mm is the effective cover. So, we will come back to calculating the overall depth. Effective cover is 38 mm, overall depth is 414.5. Always we increase the depth compared to balance section and here I have taken this as 450 mm and deducting the 38 mm effective cover I am getting 412 mm. So, from equation 6 I calculate the percentage of steel given here 50 F C K by F Y into 1 minus square root 1 minus 4.6 mu by F C K B D squared which is 0 0.78 per 758 percent. I always calculate the minimum steel because the minimum steel sh should be gone and this is 0.85 BD by FY, 0.85 BD gives you 194 mm squared. So, I require 720, so it is more than minimum, hence I can assume otherwise suppose you get this as uh, 150, then you have to use minimum steel. The reason is to avoid the brittle failure of the reinforced concrete. So, the number of bars required. So, how many bars you require? 720 divided by area of one steel bar, it is 201. So, if you do this, you get 3.58. You very well know, it is not possible to get 3.58 bars. So, what we should do? We should round off this to the next integer number that is 4. Hence, provide 4 bars of 16 mm dia bar in the tension zone. This is the solution to this design problem. So, quickly I will go through this, we have a shortage of time, but it is the same thing what we did earlier. We have to determine the reinforcement instead of the designing the depth, depth is given here. So, I calculate x u max and p t limit to start with then I calculate x u in terms of a s t, I do not know the value of a s t. So, I calculate this, then I go to the value of p t by using 50 f c k by f y 1 minus square root 1 minus 4.6 m u by f c k b d squared, I get it as 0 0.59 percent. If you know the percentage of steel, it is very easy to calculate area of steel, 0.59 by 100 gives you the ratio of steel p t. 200 into effective depth 400, 472 mm squared. So, the minimum steel is 163.85, so provide 4, 3 bars of 16 mm dia. So, we check whether the section is under reinforced or not, we calculate x u or we can use the previous step and we get this as 151.4, whereas the x u max is 192. Therefore, x u is less than x u max, the section is under reinforced. On the same lines, we can also do for a slab. Slab is a member which is spread over the area in which we consider the width of the slab for calculation purpose as 1 meter and the width of the beam is 1 meter in this case, otherwise it is the same. Only thing is the thickness is small 150 mm, so the calculation is same x u you calculate 19.72, then moment of resistance from the same equation T u into z, then you calculate the area of steel and then you check the type of the section it is under reinforced. So, quickly I 
go through the summary. We have used the 28th day compressive strength of the concrete. We used cubes 150 by 150. Then I told you about the limiting limit state method of design. Then I have given you three types of problems that is the first type is to find the neutral axis depth and tell what is the type of the beam then calculating moment of resistance then the third type is designing the beam. So, with this friends I have completed the portion on singly reinforced section. I hope uh, you can review all this and come prepared. We will see next week doubly reinforced section when you provide the reinforcement on compression side also what happens to the analysis. Thank you. Have a nice day and we will meet next week. Thank you.